students. Today we're going to be talking about column chromatography. Another word for column chromatography is solid phase extraction, sometimes using the acronym SPE. We'll be using for our column this little uh, thimble. It has a material that's in here that's silica gel. It's kind of like a sand, a white sand, and it's been coated with a hydrocarbon of 18 carbons long, C18, and it gives it a hydrophobic uh, coating, which is nonpolar. Today in our experiment, we're going to work on separating a mixture of three colors, yellow, red, and blue, and they can be separated uh, using their, uh, the properties of the nonpolar material here and the aluent or the solvents we'll be putting in here, or the mobile phase, and depending on the polarity that we put in, we can separate these molecules, the three different colors in here, because they have different polarities. So to get started, you need to condition your solid phase ex uh, extraction or your column with this material, and you can do that with some deionized water or tap water. So we can squirt a little bit of that in here. So I have DI here, and then I have some tap. We're finding actually that the polarity of water changes whether you're using tap water, which has ions in it, making it actually a little bit more polar, or using deionized water, which the ions have been removed, they actually have different polarity. So we're going to use a little tap water to get this going. Now the lab talks about using a thimble or a, a plunger or something to push that through. In graduate school, I was exposed to a different technology of using a little bit of air pressure. So if you take your medicine dropper, take the uh, top off, and we're going to hook it to your hose, and we're going to make, and if you can find a number four stopper, or a number three, or a number five, and it'll all work, we are going to hook this up to air pressure. And you'll see it, it says air on it, and we're just going to give a little bit of air pressure to get this going. If you can hear it, that's too loud, so we just need a very little bit of air pressure. When we do that, we can put this on top and pressing quite firmly, we can push water through and hopefully you can see the drops coming out. So we'll just use air pressure to move uh, the mobile phase, the aluent, through uh, the column. This to get prepared. This happens a lot, they just, just pop off because of the pressure that's generated by pushing it on. So you'll have to find a happy uh, medium pressure that will get us going, maybe not pop it off too much. And sometimes it'll pop it. You want to make sure you're not knocking anything over with that too. Now you'll be able to find the ring stand and some holders for your thing, for your column in the lab, in your common areas. So I'm trying to push some more of the liquid through to get it conditioned. Okay, and that's, maybe I need just a little bit more air pressure. So I do have to press quite firmly for it to push through. And we can see the wire now coming up rapidly, and I'm not finding that happy medium <laughs> of getting uh, pressure through the system and through the air. So we'll continue to work with that. Get that on nice and tight, and get this on nice and tight. Okay, now once you push the column of water through there, it's dry, but, not, but it's wet there because I didn't push it all the way through, we can go ahead and load our sample. Just like in thin layer chromatography, we want to make the smallest, uh, what I call like a little plug, as we can. So using a couple of milliliters here, I know you'd love to know how many drops, but uh, maybe 20. We don't want a too big of a plug here. We want to then, once we've taken our color mixture, we want to put that on to the column. We don't want to fill up the column uh, all the way to the top. We just want it, uh, enough to get it on there. And once all the liquid has been absorbed on here, I'm going to stop. Now, you can almost see here that the yellow color is coming through in red. It's already getting some separation. I'm going to go ahead and use tap water to fill up the top 
And I know I pushed the color on there because I'm not getting any color leaking back into my mobile phase, the tap water. So now I can go ahead and push. Oop, I can see the yellow color. Oop, we gotta be careful, sometimes we can get wet uh, by pushing that on. The yellow is about ready to come off. So I'm gonna now switch over to a cuvette, which we're gonna to use to do absorption spectroscopy, to collect the yellow color. So here we go. The yellow is coming off. The main thing here is we want to collect the, the color. Now if you don't quite fill up the cuvette, don't worry, we can add more water to it to get it to the proper level. The main thing is purity to get just the yellow off. And I've got some good drops there already. And that is enough to do our spectroscopy so we can see the wavelength. But I got a little more yellow, so I'm going to try to push it off. Get myself a little wet. So that's okay. And if I, that looks like I've got good yellow separation from the red and the other color blue in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more water. And now that is ready for spectroscopy. Now we can continue to use water um, in here. And we can continue to separate the rest of the yellow color. I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it in my waste container. And it keeps coming off. That to get it on there tighter and tighter. Okay, so we want to keep pushing the water through until all the yellow's off. But since I got a good, clean, what they call fraction of the yellow, I don't need to collect anymore. Yellow's still coming off, but I see the red moving just a little bit. Once you've got to this stage and you think you've got most of the yellow, you can actually go to deionized water. It's nonpolar. And it will actually start to move the red a little bit. And it should get the rest of the yellow to come off. I can see the yellow starting to come off. And you just keep adding water until you get all the yellow. And this is how you get color separation using column chromatography. So now that I've got the yellow essentially off. The red, you could, might be able to come off of the deionized water. But if we make the mobile phase more nonpolar, it will overcome the nonpolar, nonpolar interactions between the C18 cartridge and the nonpolar dye molecule. And so you can make a little solution of 5% uh, isopropyl alcohol and let's go ahead and use our the water and 95% water. It's better if you go 95% or 9.5 milliliters of our GI water here. That will work better, it would be in great shape. And then I'm going to add a little bit of iceberg alcohol. Now it hasn't mixed very well, so maybe we could use a little stopper in here. And I can use the kind of stopper and mix it up. Now, once I've got this mixture that has some nonpolar solvent in it, I can add that to the top, and I should be able to extract out the red. Okay, here comes the rest of the yellow. Ooh, that might have been too much because I'm seeing the blue starting to come off, and. Uh, I think I had too much, oh, there's a little bit of red. So I can collect the red, and it looks like I might get the red and the blue to come off, but there's the red coming off, and my blue is starting to come, so I can go ahead and go right to my next. Let's say that good, clean separation. I think I was a little lucky there. So now I can get the, the blue to come off. Okay, so now I got my blue, I've got my red, and I've got my yellow. And you'd say, oh, that's not enough for the light to go through the cuvette to actually do the reading on those. So I can go ahead and just fill them up with water to complete this. The spectrometer will work great and pick up the colors that we're going to need and do the absorption spectroscopy. So you can start to see what the spectrum will look like for these colors. And help train the brain to see what a yellow color will look like in an absorption spectroscopy. Does it absorb yellow color?
there's a transmitting yellow. We're going to find that out during the lab. So hopefully you get a little better experience uh, understanding how we might do column chromatography in our lab coming up.